Hello everyone and welcome to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3. In this episode I am starting off with a Mars rocket, uh, the Nico Centaur carrying some probes for Mars, Deimos, and Phobos. Now we have to land on Deimos. Technically we don't have to land on Phobos, we just have to do a flyby, but I'm gonna try and land a probe there anyway. And so Nico Centaur you guys know about, we've seen this rocket a few times now. But at the top of it, we've got a complicated situation. Uh, we've got the main fairing actually covering the probes, but then there's the, the um, asterisk stage here with uh, six total solar panels there. We're using these antennae still. I could have used this one, this AIES Comtech dish. And this, uh, well, on, on one hand, it, seems, it has a nice range. It has 300 million kilometers and the electric charge is well over what this, I mean, it's, it's not very efficient. It's heavier than two of these and the electric charge is pretty bad. Uh, so yeah, the confusing thing is it says a light dish for short-range communication even though it's got, you know, a lot much longer range than this one does. So I think maybe it's not properly configured for all this? I don't know. Uh, I would only consider using it just to avoid any semblance of being cheaty. Uh, one reason I didn't though is because I didn't actually have a place to put it on this design. Uh, if I wanted to put it radially, I'd have to mount two of them, which would be way overkill, especially with the electric charge. And uh, there was no place to put it in line except maybe at the bottom down here, but then I wouldn't be able to attach the stage. So that was sort of a frustration. This one, by the way, has uh, not enough range anyway. Effective range 37 million kilometers, it says. Okay, so that's the antenna situation. We're still using two of uh, these guys here. And then we have three probes. The top one is the one for Mars. So we're assuming that we're going to plop that one off at Mars first. You can see it has a parachute. Uh, it has about a thousand meters per second of fuel. Uh, I'm not using reaction wheels this time because uh, they're super expensive. If I had to use a reaction wheel on each of these, That'd be 7,500 funds more. They're 2,500 funds each. So that's crazy talk right there. Uh, I don't know if uh, there's any other system that might be nicer here. It doesn't look like it. It's all RCS. So they've got little RCS ports here. And we can double check their Arizine and N204 ports. The thrusters are Arizine and N204 thrusters. And we've got Arizine, Arizine. And so that's a thousand there. It's got a drogue chute and main chute in there. I don't know exactly how it stages when it's got both a drogue and a main. We'll have to see. Uh, these little probes are the ones for Deimos and Phobos. And uh, right away you can see that they have these larger instruments. And therefore less delta V. They have about 700. And uh, they also don't have the parachute. The parachute uh, is really what made it difficult for this one to carry the extra instruments. And all of them use the Communitron 16s to communicate communicate with this thing. So that's how they're going to relay the signal back. Uh, so this is very critical. We have to be in line of sight of this for anything to work. Uh, they've got little solar panels of their own, but that will not give them uh, what you got, unlimited charge. Eventually they'll run out of charge, but it'll be a long time. Uh, they should have enough for a while as long as they stay in the sun for a bit. Uh, they've got the little instruments there, though... Uh, I wish we had six of them because I have a slot that I don't have anything in there. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have stack separators yet for some reason. I don't know why we don't have stack separators instead of decouplers. Uh, I don't see an option to change this one to a separator. And then I haven't found any separators in structural either. I don't know when we develop those. Uh, but yeah, so that means that they're going to be stuck on to the stage below it. And uh, more annoyingly, it doesn't show the correct mass here. So, lots of little annoyances here and there, but three cute little probes. Uh, will this one survive entry into Mars' atmosphere? No idea. Will I be able to land it? No idea. Uh, so, those are questions that will be answered pragmatically. Then we have the Delta Avionics package, we can do, which can deal with 10 tons. We've got some extra electric charge here. Otherwise, we've got two asterisk engines burning for six minutes is the stage time. Let's take a look at the very, very complicated Delta V stats. Uh, so this stage uh, will provide uh, 
3,900 meters per second, six minutes, and uh, everything this stage and above is 7.5 tons, so well within the limits of the avionics. Each of these has avionics 4.3, and uh, I, I don't know about the 0.2, uh, this might be deceptive, but basically all three of them are 0.888, I think is what uh, is correct there. Let me just double check everything has fuel. So it's a tight thing and you know I've, I've pushed the avionics to its limit for these three probes. We'll see if I accidentally went over or not. Uh, after that it's just the rest of the rocket that you've seen before so nothing too special there. I decided to not have uh, a single huge fairing around it. I have a separate fairing here because this fairing base is not very different from the mass of a decoupler right there anyway so I don't know if this saves us from some fair, extra fairing mass if I use the inner stage fairing instead of the big fairings hopefully I mean the inner stage fairing should not be weighing nearly as much as the main aerodynamic fairing does but I don't know anyway once you've got all that we've got um, we've got these stages these get us into orbit this is the Mars transfer stage with the RL10s and then so after we transfer to Mars, if everything goes right and uh, we don't have some sort of mishap on one engine or another, we will have 3,901 meters per second left in order to do stuff around Mars, which means slow down around Mars, get into orbit, uh, plop off the little uh, probe for Mars so it can land, and then transfer over to Deimos and Phobos. So that is the plan. Um, yep. Yeah. Basically, that is the idea. Is 3,900 enough? I'm not sure. Uh, so we're probably going to take 2,000-something uh, to get into orbit around Mars, and that's, that'll be a loose orbit. If we want to, we could try aerobraking, but that's dodgy business. We have no heat shield. So lots to think about. But let's build... Hmm. Let's build two of them, just in case. Just in case there's a mishap with the engines on one of them, maybe the backup can be launched and we can go like that. Uh, so we're talking about the launch engines, obviously. Okay, so I'm going to build one. And I'm going to build another. And each one takes 92 days to build. Now, besides that, we might as well start trying with that crude... So we have to do... Uh, lunar flyby mission and we sorta of, kinda of tested that system last time but on re-entry things didn't go so well because it flipped around let's take a quick look at that rocket and see if uh, everything is really alright with it and maybe we'll try putting a Kerbal in risking that this time okay so here we are again with the Oliver 2 and I don't know if I really wanted to pick it up that way uh... Attaching it back properly might be difficult. Okay, so, well, basically, I mean, we end up having this without the fairing, and that's what's coming down. Center mass, center lift in this direction. That's, uh, if we were going up, that would be the way to go. And then, oh, okay, well, that took a little while to correct. Um... So this is if we were if the airflow was going in this direction. Technically, that's right, but boy, that's that's far away from the center of mass. What effect does this stuff have? No, that's sort of. So this this is creating some sort of center of lift effect. No. Okay, now now it's changed. So once again, I can't really trust these markers. Um, because <laughs> uh, cause it decides to change things. Okay. Now this is like this. I don't know. I don't know. I don't understand it. Uh, we'll hope that holding our with the RCS will work. Definitely, we don't want those fairings on, but we won't have those on. Okay, so we will build one of these to attempt. A flyby and our victim will be Valentina. Uh, can we can we hire somebody else for this one? 
Valentina can land on the moon, darn it. We'll, we'll hire somebody else to... Uh, uh, Kazu Kerman. Yeah. Kazu Kerman has a lot of stability. Just enough courage. I think that's the right idea. Actually, we already have an Oliver 2 baking. I'm going to... Move the Uber Prober up ahead of that. And we'll just alternate after that, I think. Because... Well, Crude Lunar Flyby is actually before all this stuff, so maybe maybe we'll do it this way. Alright, we'll prioritize the Oliver 2. But then there's the Mars window. Okay, we'll do it this way. Uh, but first we have orbital ro uh, heavy orbital rocketry completing, and we'll need to test those engines out. Now actually, I want both Uber Probers to be ready by the Mars transfer window. And so right now, I'll take 150, uh, let's call it 160 days to do that and that. So I, I want to get some more upgrades. I want to increase my building speed. 5.5. Okay, that'll, that will do the trick. We'll have both Uber Probers ready. We're building stuff real fast now. Okay, warp to complete. And then, so we'll start off with the Oliver 2, attempting to go to the moon, and then we will launch the Uber Probers to Mars. Well, here goes nothing. We're removing Bill. Technically, we could send Bill, but yeah, let's, let's go with Kazu. Okay, well, what's our situation with respect to the moon? Because uh, I want to be able to plot a free return, and so it'd be nice to have relative inclination minimized. It looks like there's electric power draw. Let's make sure the clamps are, are uh, pumping. Okay, so we'll time warp until the relative inclination is at a minimum. Okay, in fact the moon is right above us right now. Interesting. Not helpful, just interesting. Okay, ignition. sound already. Okay, booster set. Boosters are separated. A little bit sloppy, but safe. Alright, first stage about to run out. First stage set. And second stage. Okay, second stage engines have lit. The RD 0210s looking all right so far. And first stage went completely fine, so those engines are good. But uh, we've got a few stages to work with here. Uh, the RL 10s are probably worrying me the most. We don't have much data on them compared to the NK-9Vs. NK-9Vs, we've got more data. Now, technically, for the NK-9Vs, we have less mean time before failure than the RL-10s, but... Yeah, in practical terms, the RL-10s, we could do some more work on. Alright, we are nearing the end of this stage. We are well on our way to orbit. Time to wap waps, this should be alright. Set. Ignition. And we have the NK9Vs ignited. They appear to be alright. Alright, uh, we're completing orbit right at our apoapsis. That's nice. I don't know if I should use all the fuel in this. I think we should just shut down at around 200 kilometers. 
All right, 221 by 149 or 150. Okay, we are going to sup so that we can use the RCS in this stage to maneuver. Oh, the thrust plate multi adapter decided to move out a little bit. Okay, uh, right. I should probably have locked the fuel up there. Let me go in there right now, and then we'll plot for the moon. Let me lock, lock. It's probably most of the fuel here. Alright, well, it's not playing nice with me and maneuver nodes, so I can't quite plot the free return correctly. I'll take, however, a periapsis of about 75 kilometer, kilometers, let's say, and then we'll correct it there. I tried doing a sending a burn there, but it th doesn't want to take that maneuver node. It just dumps it. And if I nudge this by 0.1 in any direction, it loses it. So that, that that's basically my problem is that uh, half of the time I don't seem to have an encounter with it, even when I'm supposed to. So I will take what I have here before, you know, all the ox uh, all the hydrogen boils off or something. I mean, it's not falling off that quickly, but still. Okay, so let us proceed to the maneuver node. Nice to have a pilot so that we don't have to worry about communication unless we're trying to send science back. All right, well, I have had enough wiggling, so let's just go. Ignition. Okay, both engines are on. Let's hope they stay that way. It's always amazing how the last bit of the burn determines how far out you get. You see, I mean, like this, we're, we're not even a fifth of the way to the moon, and we've burned, well, probably four-fifths of the actual burn. We've only got one-fifth left, but the last 20% determines the final 80% of the actual distance between our current, you know, apoapsis and periapsis, and one that will actually hit the moon. Okay, it's it's not very clear about things right now even. Um, let's see, RCS. Looks like we can get closer. I think our service module engine would be best for this sort of thing. Let me see, what did the flyby contract actually want exactly? Well, we, we've qualified for what the flyback contract actually wants. The rest is just gravy. So let's separate this stage off and then we can use the two service module engines. Set. Unlock fuels. Okay. And let's see, solar panels out. Good. Forward. Oh, well, that's uh, 69. Let's. Whoa, that's too close. Uh, 54 kilometers, let's say. Let's see if time warping stabilizes. Alright, that stabilizes our orbit. You're definitely drifting away from the rest of the stuff. Electric charge is not good, but that's because the sun hasn't popped out yet. Okay, well, even with the sun out, this is not the best angle to try and get sunlight. I should have uh, staggered these solar panels a bit. Uh, once again, they're in line. Let me take SAS off, turn the craft. Either way would work. But actually, logically, we'd want the tail facing the sun just, I guess, for radiation purposes or heat. Okay, now we are recharging. Our periapsis over there is 40 kilometers. Well, here we go. Everything seems to be in order. We'll get there in three days and five hours. So as far as food is concerned, we need to add that button here. We've got 21 days, so no problem. Perhaps now will let me... No, I still... 
as long as it's flickering around like that, it won't let me plot a uh, maneuver around the moon to come back to Earth. Now our waste is building up, but technically that shouldn't, any, shouldn't actually cause any life support problems. Okay, launch pad reconditioning is finished. Okay, we are now in lunar SOI. Our periapsis is 41 kilometers, which is very close. But maybe we don't want it there. Let's focus view and see what gets us a good return. Well, uh, that, that, that's a start. So we'll get into a loose orbit around the moon and then we'll eject out. Even though uh, that might nix a potential contract for us. We're going to be going straight to the, um, the whole landing thing anyway. We need to hurry on that. What date is it, by the way? It's uh, November 22nd, 1966. I guess I should do an EVA report high over the moon. Uh, have we done that yet? Probably not. Okay, EVA report. Keep. Board. And crew report. Transmit. And transmit the EVA report. Oh, I should have gotten rid of the nose cone. Let's get rid of that. Okay, I think SAS will help us keep stable a little bit better than Smarty SS here. Okay, very good. Let's get a little bit closer to periapsis. Okay, selling the fuel down and ignition. So far no engine trouble and I don't expect engine trouble on anything else from here on out. Okay, that is the orbit I wanted. Let's see what happens when we eject out from the wrong side unfortunately but that looks about right okay so no worries there I think this time we'll have this even though it's equipped with a docking port and can be used as a tug I think I will have it help us out and slow down on the earth side so we'll pull down the orbit to minimize how much heat we take I don't know if that's a good thing to do or not, but I'd feel a little bit better. Okay, so, yep, I guess we are close to the moon. Yeah, rather close. So let's have Kazu EVA again. And in space near the moon, does not look like it's biome dependent. So that's a shame. Uh, but the crew report is biome dependent. Transmitting the lowlands, and then the EV report. But we definitely got more than 100 science out of this. Oh, uh, we also got the crude altitude record, crude duration record, uh, crude speed record as well. But we haven't actually sent anything with two Kerbals. So right now, to fulfill a bunch of contracts, all we have to do is bring Kazu back safely. Which is the trick, isn't it? And back we go. Very brief trip to the moon, but hey, it was just supposed to be a flyby anyway. Okay, shut down because we now have a negative periapsis. Oh, um, let's get rid of the maneuver. And there's our periapsis. Let's go for uh, 60. I wanted 65 actually. I'm not actually sure what's correct in this version. That's pretty close. Okay. So that's that situation. Now, I would like to bring the orbit down a little bit. 
over on this side. But we'll have to plot that so that it doesn't reduce our periapsis. So let's say we add a maneuver in five days, which is how long it's going to take to get back. You can see it's already brought down our periapsis. I think uh, if I bring it down this low, we could probably go 70 or something. Okay, uh, 68. Let's say 68. That should definitely bring us down. We definitely have enough fuel for this particular maneuver. And that's quite a lot of extra apoapsis dumped. So hopefully that'll be a good thing. All right, out of Lunar SOI. We'll be passing by the moon once more on escape here. All right, we are in Earth space right now and we are returning home. I suppose there is some science to be done here that we might as well do now. Crew report. Yeah, high over the Earth. Transmit. Ah, no comm devices. Hmm. Well, actually, there are. Uh, review report. Transmit. Oh, there's, yeah, there's the electric charge in the capsule and everything. Okay. All right. And then, I guess, EVA. Excellent. Keep experiment. Board. And transmit. Yeah, around the moon we were actually transmitting even without our antennae extended. Okay, approaching the node. Fuel is settled. Ignite. So it's going to be a little bit weird because we're going to separate both service modules at the same time. I guess it's not too bad. There's technically only one decoupler. There's a docking port between them. Okay, that was getting a little bit out of hand. Alright, I'll leave it there. And that's, that's okay. Let's orient normal. So we don't bump into this thing when we separate. And we'll still have our Arizona N204 up here and here. So that's good. Okay, dumping the service modules. Making sure that that's the right decoupler. Okay, off they go. Now, capsule stuff. Active. Retrograde for now. We're still going very fast. Just not quite as fast as we would have been. So whatever uh, descent mode on. We've got armed the parachutes now. Let me verify their settings. Yeah, obviously dangerous to actually deploy them, but arm. This is wiggling a lot. But we actually have a lot of fuel for it to do so. And it's using this fuel first, which is probably for the best. Actually, it probably can't access that fuel because of the decoupler right now. We actually have a bit of an unintentional tilt to us. The pitch is maxed out, so maybe there is a descent mode thing. But I don't want it to go crazy on me right now. So I'll let the thrusters try and counter it. So maybe there is a descent mode thing going on here right now. But I don't want it to flip out or anything. We saw the center of lift. I have no idea where it is. I'd rather be safe. 
we're actually going up. Uh oh, I think we skipped out. I didn't uh, send it in deep enough, it looks like. Ah, uh, well, that can happen. Forgot about that. I thought we had burned enough velocity off of the Astros engine to make, you know, 70 kilometers possible, but it doesn't look like it. Well, this was a good preliminary test to make sure everything's all right, at least. We've got plenty of RCS fuel left. Fortunately, there's plenty of electric charge in here, but I'll have to pump up some Arizine N204 because that's been firing away so far. I guess we'll take 67 kilometers as a good amount for the next pass. Definitely want to come down. Okay, now RCS on. Same thing, zero that out. Okay. Hopefully it worked this time. This should be low enough. I mean, we burned off about 1,300 last time. If you burn off 1,300 this time, that definitely is suborbital. Okay, where are we? We are uh, over the Indian Ocean. Yep. Um, there seems to be an island here. Don't know which one. Okay, here we go. Pitch is maxing out. 66 kilometers. And we are definitely coming down here. A brief spat of going up, but that is not going to last. So, uh, this end mode definitely working out for us. What was the maximum g-forces? 2.9 g's? Well, we're, we've not hit the bit where there's a lot of g-forces. So that's like 50 kilometers and below, but... Uh, still, we are slowing down. We're sort of skirting the atmosphere. We're getting lift here, obviously. Otherwise, we wouldn't be going up. We're only going up and gaining an apoapsis because of lift. But we're coming back down again. Vertical speed is decreasing. A blader was hardly touched so far. Okay, let me check the fuel levels. Uh, I do need to pump up some fuel. In, in. Hopefully this doesn't un unbalance anything. I don't think it will. Again, technically the RCS is counteracting the descent mode, but it makes me feel a little bit better. After all, any more descent mode tilt and this stuff might end up overheating take a look at the straight line there and it looks like we're peaking out at about 4 G's so that's very good so definite descent mode here in 1.1.3 I really uh, didn't think there was one in up for the spot in 1.1.2 but that's just me at least uh, that there was no good effect this time it's quite obvious We carry a lot of fuel, by the way, just in case we have to like fix our periapsis and stuff like that, uh, depending on what happens if we skip out and weird things happen. So we're just dumping it now, basically. Where are we? Yeah, in the middle of the Indian Ocean. Uh, south of India, right there. Parachute deployment. Both chutes look the same, so that's good. Not misconfigured. Slowing down, RCS off. Full parachute deployment brings us to 5 meters per second. Well, looks like Kazu Kerman is going to be the first Kerbal to fly by the moon in this series. And everything worked 
excellently, no engine problems. No problems at all, really. Except for the skip out, which probably benefited us in terms of G-forces. Okay, splash. Odd colored water. We're sort of floating above it. Let's ignore that. Recover before any other glitches happen. Okay, 20 science earned from the actual return of the vessel. We got some funds back, but not as much as we would have if we were closer to KSC. And Kazakurman attained level 1. So, excellent news. And, uh, well, why don't we just go ahead and launch the Mars rocket and see what happens. So, we'll time warp to the transfer window. And then at that point we can launch the rocket. And we'll have a backup as well, ready to go, just in case. We also have a backup for the Oliver 2, which we don't need right now. But it's also got the tug on it, so we could use that. It could also be in reserve as a rescue vehicle. That might be a good idea. It could easily rescue a single Kerbal from the moon. So, yeah, actually, we will do that. That is now a rescue vehicle. Okay. Well, here we go again. Uh, let's line up. Let's see. I mean, strictly speaking, for Mars, you know, we don't need to line up with the moon, but... If it's ex if it, the difference is extreme, that might cause us problems, and it is. <laughs> uh, that's why I check. Yeah, I mean that's as bad as it can get. So that mean that will cause problems if we try and transfer like that. So let's toggle pump to make sure everything is gonna be replenished, and time warp. All right, throttle up, SAS on. Everything looks to be fueled, so ignition. Whoa, that was a delay. Okay, launch. For a sec there, I was wondering what the heck happened. Now, this time we're gonna have to watch out for communication. I just launched a mission with a Kerbal, and so I have to get into the mindset of making sure communication is alright. We're obviously not going to finish this mission today, but we'll get it started, basically. Get it to orbit, maybe to transfer. Okay, booster set. Sloppy, but safe. Okay, stage run almost out. Alright, step, step. Weird sound. Ignition. Yeah, the, 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 there's some weird sounds in that transition right there. I wonder if the program needs a restart. Okay, well, looking good so far. Five more seconds on the second stage. Set. Ignition. So the second stage was good, and now we're on the NK-9Vs. Probably a good time to separate the fairings. Off those go. Now of course the reason why we have so many stages, you know, we've got three stages to orbit and then another transfer stage is because of the burn time limitations, mainly. I mean, this one starts out at 1G's. It doesn't really need to start at 1G's, though it's nice because you don't have to keep too high an angle or anything. But, yeah, mainly uh, if we could, you know, extend the burn times, it would be nicer. We could. Oh, and another restriction is the fact that it's really hard to fit a lot of engines on a particular stage. And, you know, we'd have to make everything wider. And if you make everything wider. I guess that's possible. Uh, I'm sticking to three meters because at one point we were limited to this uh, diameter, but after unlocking more technologies, we might be able to build wider things. We probably should. The, the Nico Centaur is a little bit on the pencil side. Uh, 
Okay, getting ready to shut down. And that's good enough. 256 by 142. Very tight orbit on the periapsis side. But that'll be okay. And let's separate that off. RCS forward a bit. Oh, uh, we should... Oh, that was not a good thing. We need to lock all the fuels for everything. And we want to extend some antennae. Let's just extend the one on the top probe for now. Because the other ones are hidden in the fairing. So we'll have to make our transfer pretty quickly. Because we need to separate the fairing so that we can get at the solar panels. We could uh, separate two fairing pieces right now and it'll be fine. But yeah, better to just take care of the transfer. And I think I'll save that for the next episode because I'm wiped out for now. And it's probably already a very long episode. So yeah, next time the first thing we'll do is handle a transfer for this particular vehicle. And then we will move on to using all the new engines we unlocked. And we will try to make a new large lunar launcher, which will take our Kerbal to the surface of the moon. Okay, so on that note, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.